Hello, I'm Tim McHenry. At the Rubin Museum of Art, we have the privilege of sharing ideas and art from the Himalayas with the world. This art form can guide us on how we can explore our inner world to help us better navigate the outer one. In this onstage brainwave program, filmed on December the 9th, 2022, we looked at what the concept of ignorance means. This all-pervasive state of unawareness is what feeds the other clashes, the afflictive states addressed in this series, pride, attachment, envy, and anger. How do we know what we don't know? Ignorance sits at the center of the Varochana Mandala, but so does its converse wisdom, the ability to see things as they truly are. Kempo Pema Wangduk is a New York-based teacher in the Sakya tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. Head of the Vikrama Silla Foundation, he was the first Tibetan to receive the distinguished Ellis Island Medal of Honor. He is in conversation with Dr. Adriana Renero, the visiting research scholar at NYU on philosophy of mind. Together they address what we think we know about ignorance and, from the Buddhist point of view, what role lack of awareness plays in our happiness. So, um, ignorance. Uh, I like to start with the word. Uh, uh, in Tibetan, we we call marikpa. Ma, rikpa. Ma is a negative. Rik means aware. To uh, to be aware. The rikpa is called conscious. Be conscious. Be aware. Um, it is a direct translation of. Uh, Sanskrit uh, term called vid, to, to, to be aware, vid. Um, our talk is, uh, this whole program is, uh, is in, done in conjunction with Verachana. Verachana's name is called sarva vid. Sarva is a, a Sanskrit term, or vid means all, all conscious, all knowing, all aware. So the idea is the, the the awareness, the knowledge is the key. So the, um, so the question uh, is what is ignorance, <laughs> is that right? Uh, ignorance is nothing. It's, it's, it's just simply lack, like what is science, which is absence of sound, is that right? And ignorance is the lack of awareness, the lack of knowledge, the lack of wisdom, how to cook, is that right? The basic things, how to talk to each other, how to think thoughts. Uh, something that we go and we go about our daily business and live a life and have a good life, hopefully, and live long and die. Versus what is the underlining of all of these things? There are two factors. Um, the, the word, all things is empty. For those who are unaware, unaware, ignorant of all things is empty. Empty here, the word means the, it is, it is include that what we believe, what we think, or anything we focus on, obsessed with, are afraid of, or, 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 uh, or too attached to, or, or anything else that we resent, or we are, uh, 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 we are attracted to, uh, uh, becomes very serious for us, gives you a clue that we are obsessed. We think that there's something there to die for, to live with it, to argue, to be angry about, uh, and, and to be afraid of, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So all of these points out that there is something we call tenji in this ingrained state of mind which has this unquestioning uh, uh, understanding uh, where things are, the knowledge uh, that is uh, underlining uh, uh, truth is, is free, pure, uh, like uh, water, see-through, crystal clear, but made uh, polluted, uh, murky, and undrinkable, and you get sick and we can die. The same water can do that when it's confused, diluted, etc. So we have here the word ignorance should be treated as two kind: the innate, inborn 
things we think the way things are, and we pursue that level. And then the culture, religion, philosophy, we say is, uh, this is what we think is right and we should follow. Uh, I think we need to understand two sides. One, two, I should not say two sides. The basic ignorance is, is one area of ignorance, mm -hmm. but the, the day to day life, or, or like, like how we are born, how we die, how we live, live longer, how can be a little bit happier, all of these associated with the, this is, 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 is some kind of lack of, of, of uh, knowledge. And that's why those who are educated have a better life, is that right? And the ones who are ignorant, they suffer more. You know? um, I've seen it, uh, uh, everything from drugs and addictions to a simple lack of knowledge. There's a young Tibetan girl in India. She didn't know that this electric wire is alive. She was she she touched it and lost both her arms. You know, this gives you idea uh, that a simple lack of knowledge can affect so strongly. But here we're talking about our attitudes, our mindsets, our emotions, uh, uh, and we can we notice that in the level of satisfaction and contentment with the people like us. All of, we are all are, uh, among the most fortunate people when it comes to the foods we have. I mean, this is a luxury, literally. But how much of a, a higher level of peace and happiness we have uh, compares to those who have no shoes, no shirts to wear. Is that right? So it's a questionable. And occasionally you see, uh, when you travel to third world countries, some of us are jealous of their joys, <laughs> their laughters. Is that right? So it gives you idea that, that there is more to know inside of us. And we are very interested in the West. Uh, and yet, sarva vidya, all knowing, uh, meaning the wisdom teachings of the Buddha is not cutthroat wisdom. Mm -hmm. It is organic. You, you, you learn tits and bits, connect dots and make a life a little better. Another, every level of spiritual, uh, mental, emotional level have a room to evolve. This is really organic, nurturing process that evolve. So when we talk about basic ignorance uh, uh, versus the day-to-day -day life ignorance, uh, I think it needs to be connected to that because no matter how we do well, we still are subject to death, dying, and aging, and discontent, and misfortunes. Is that right? No amount of absolute effort that we put can ever make us perfect. And yet, on the relative level of the wisdom, there is a relative version, a version of perfection is achievable. And it gives you an idea that it's the wisdom that we can gain and that we counteract whatever we lack, the knowledge, which is the ignorance. Hmm. Perfect. This is, this is very interesting and very rich. Um, as a philosopher, of course, I like to find definitions. And it seems that we have found one definition here. Uh, so we know at least one thing, which is what ignorance is. Mm. So we could say, according to your words, we could say that ignorance is a lack of knowledge, but mm. also is a state of con or condition of being unaware of something, and also is an emotion, an afflictive emotion in some, mm. in some way, and it can affect other um, emotions or other mental states. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Could you agree with that? Yeah, that's definition? the basic. And that, uh, that we should need to track down to the basic ignorance. Perfect. There's always something there. Like we, we had this kind of very confusing experience occasionally. Uh, in a very pure mind, if you look at it, this is very confusing. Not because we are unhappy or uh, something bad happened, but just uh, just quite sitting there, watching our mind and universe, and that's what Buddha did, sitting on the Bodhi tree. 
and scanning the entire universe. What's going on? <laughs> and, and when you scan uh, uh, precisely within, and, and especially watch oneself, uh, uh, you will notice there's, there's some kind of uh, missing uh, longing or, or, or something that we can point the finger at. Uh, uh, it's, uh, that, that basic ignorance, meaning we are obsessed with the things that is non-existent. And if it does exist, it is only for a brief moment. So it's kind of like we are literally creating uh, a suffering, uh, for, uh, uh, next suffering, while we are trying to enjoy this brief moment of joy. Uh, and, and, and that is, is there uh, deep down in our hearts, always looking, searching, never ever says, that's good enough. I know this. That's the way it is. So in other words, the freedom lies in connecting to the nature that nature says is pure and perfect, organic, interdependent. And then there's nothing absolute to hold on to, which we call it emptiness. And whoever understands that, they freeze themselves. There they find the joys and the happiness of the things they have. And the joys and the happiness, and they're content with the things they don't have. Either way, you gain the wisdom. So there's one big difference between the West and the East, especially Eastern here means Buddhism. Sure. Buddhism, we talk about like, like as if ignorance is as a starting point, is that right? And then everything else kind of like a big bang comes out. Uh, that's, we, 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 we talk in a sequence like that, but the nature is not sequential. I, I like to say in an organic way. Uh, uh, we, we use the word, for the lack of a better word, no beginning, no end. Uh, uh, the beginning and end are not real. They are like any other concept, a concept, uh, a concept of beginning. So uh, the best way to look at it is uh, the term Buddha uses is called interdependent, mm -hmm. interconnected. Uh, 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 I, for my own good, I like to look at it in an organic way. You know, there's no one particular thing that makes thing a flower, a beautiful thing. There's so many things. The, the, the Big Bang is in, is big part of that little flower that we're looking at. Is that right? Can you imagine that? We should be aware of that. Uh, in fact, so many of our sufferings are actually uh, is created by not knowing what is happiness. That's mm. funny. While we are obsessed with the overcoming happiness, the uh, suffering, and then running, so so, uh, running after so-called happiness, and yet we are running after the very misery and suffering, never knowing that, that, that it is what, what we're doing is, is just exactly the opposite. And that is, if you look close enough, you will see that. You know, the basic level. It's, it's not, it doesn't require, uh, you know, major education. And then no wonder among the teaching uh, disciples, the Buddhas, that we have all kinds of people, men, women, low caste, upper caste, rich, poor. They found the meanings mm. of life. Profoundly, profound meanings. Uh, maybe we can imagine the far better uh, meaning of life than we think we have 21st century with this computer race. Is that right? Uh, anyway. Yes. <laughs> no, this is uh, very interesting because it's connected also with another question I have, which is uh, how can we get rid of or overcome um, ignorance, um, mm -hmm. and how can we find a path mm -hmm. to, or the path of, of knowledge? Um, mm -hmm. So is there, is there any way, uh, let me just uh, share a little bit of what I have learned mm -hmm. about um, in Western philosophy, we start um, 
uh, let's say, the, the beginning, or by nature, better, by mm. nature, all human beings mm. desire to know. So mm. they want to know. And this is mm. what, uh, for example, Aristotle, in uh, book first of the Metaphysics, says, uh, all human beings desire, by nature, to know. And also, he says, there is like a capacity of wonders. Um, I don't know much about, at all, Western philosophy. Yeah. So I will say a few words, see if it connects yes. to what you um, The question is how we go about learning or evolving and generating a degree of wisdom or overcoming or minimizing the ignorance. Uh, in the case of Buddha's teaching, it is literally what Buddha teach about the universe and underlining truth or underlining uh, 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 realities on the one hand. On the other hand, Buddha's teaching caters to each individual. In other words, each one of us in this group are absolutely different, totally different from one another, temperamentally, interest, mood, level of education, opinion, uh, predispositions, health levels, attitudes, or you can name all kinds of things. Each one of us is uh, so different. Now, you will, some of you will disagree, or you may not even like to hear this. There will be no spiritual evolution unless we take care of our body, which is good health, and the peace of mind. Then we can talk about the teachings. <laughs> Then we talk about the Verochana, we can talk about the meditation of major things and emptiness and, 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 and inner you know, evolution that takes place, That's, that actually a revolution takes place inside, which can then affect and have the power and the influence over other uh, countless of others like Buddha himself. So, uh, Based on what we call Chilne Tetam Sandam Gomala and Jarus. First, be educated, be informed. I mean, first, uh, live a, a, a kind of what you call disciplined life. That's the key. Eat properly, work properly. In other words, your spiritual, uh, uh, your spiritual value don't start at a temple or some kind of vow you take. Your spiritual temple starts precisely where you are. No matter who you are, just it absolutely doesn't matter. And, and that too, good health and peace of mind. They're basic, functional. Because unhappiness is not a privilege. It's not a right either. It's a dangerous. It's, it's very harmful. And all the uh, uh, harms we do each other uh, uh, beside the ignorance, mm -hmm. uh, that's a given, <laughs> uh, unhappiness right behind it. Underlining violence, all the bad things we do, or anything, bad words, bad thoughts, bad emotions, whatever, anger, there is, there is underlining unhappiness, meaning our mind is not peaceful. So, when, so our mind is not happy. When we are not happy, is that right? We are ignorant of happiness, is that right? <laughs> there are two areas. The, our behavior defines us, basically, uh, uh, where we think, where we say things, uh, how we uh, conduct physical, uh, whatever we do. There are two, our behavior has two kind of level we need to understand. One is ingrained instincts we call pakcha. One is the reaction part of it. These are two different things. Two different, not like two separate things. They're like the tree versus the root of it. Is that right? The same, but the root and the stem are different. The same thing. Uh, so uh, we do have, I think we have a little bit of a problem in the West. So somehow when you do a little meditation, Somehow you're not supposed to get angry. Is that right? Is that have you done that? To get Probably. an end. To get you know, like say if somebody says, "Oh, I have a difficult time controlling my anger. Cannot learn meditation. How to do that?" 
and then expect that somehow you do some meditation and the anger is to go away. That's, that's wrong, <laughs> completely wrong. So uh, sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, but there's the good news, <laughs> not, not to be too discouraged. <laughs> there is uh, ingrained uh, instincts of anger. That's called pakcha. But there is something you provoke it, that is the reaction side of it. So meditation, the real purpose of meditation is to touch the depth of the pakcha, the ingrained part. So we misunderstood that. Yeah. Uh, because our day-to-day -day behavior is like if I'm angry, I can train my mind without even so-called meditating. And besides, if we focus too much on meditation, we really want to go to the caves and, and, and the forest and the deserts. There, you challenge your inside. But in a life like this, and you do some prayer, some morning meditation, <laughs> it's not going to touch nothing. It's kind of like rubbing a boulder that's blocking the winter sun against your window with a feather. <laughs> so, so you need an ax or, or something to blow it off. Is that right? Even that doesn't work. No. These instincts are not going to go away. Uh, and, and that is a problem. And that we are angry. We're upset that things are not changing. The world is not peaceful. We are more angry about the people who are, we are sometimes angrier than the people who are angry against us. <laughs> we are more frustrated than people who are frustrated yeah. out there. So we, we can't see. But if we understand that, then we are able to understand it's okay to be angry. It's okay. So it's, it's anger doesn't do much harm. It's a reaction to the anger, which does more harm. It's not the pain and suffering that make us suffering. It is our own anxieties, our, our paranoia, our anticipation of the pain and that we're going to suffer or, or, uh, uh, or having suffered. Uh, we spend more time about the suffering and we suffer more about the suffering than the suffering per se and because we think the suffering should not be there. Suffering will be there. But if we accept it, uh, what Buddha says, that this is the truth of suffering, one should know about this, and, and, and it's as good as you know, suffering. Uh, because this body will crumble and decay. That's true. And if we try to challenge that, we'll suffer. But if we accept that, is that right? Then we transcend the image that what Buddha said, if you're attached, to the form, mm -hmm. we suffer. This form changes. Exactly. But if you if you attach the compassion or kindness or generosity, it's your own, and then it's a guaranteed. Uh, so anyway, the uh, having said that, is that what is important is to to separate these two areas. We can minimize anger by. Uh, Disciplining ourselves, is that right? Uh, things like we know what makes us angry. Not that the anger will go away, but, but we can live a life. I have that little experience myself, and why not you? And I, I remember the problems I had in the 1980s. I still have the same problem, but I don't have a problem. <laughs> Do you see the point there? There's this, there's, you, you evolve, you mature, you, 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 you grow, you can do that. So much so that I've seen the people of all sorts, not just the religious people, ordinary people living and dying happily. And then they're happier to die than the people we are like the rest of us living <laughs> because they understood. They understood the beauty of the life. Now it's time to go. And they understand that you cannot obsess with this body. It will crumble. You know, you do that, you suffer. So they let go. 
there's a beauty there. So there are all the tangible things we should relate tangibly. All the pakcha ingrain takes lifetime, and, and we are a believer of the rebirth, life after life. So it's not the anger. To, to, to expect the anger to go away will be wrong. 